Baltimore, heroin was and is the drug of choice. All right, Shalom. First off, want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, by Sim Yahweh Shah. Double honors to the apostles of Great Millstone. And the sincere Shalom to all the Akim out here that's doing and pushing the work of truth and sincerity. Uh, this is uh, Taza Warrior. Sham Yah. And I have with me Sham Yah. You know, we are basically going to go through the spirit about this neighborhood where we grew up at, man. You see, this, as you can see, there are no houses. You know, so it's basically gentrification. You know, they moved out uh, the people from this neighborhood. You know, into uh, what well, they they paid them to move. You know, into to basically neighborhoods that really they don't they can't afford. You know, and at one point in time, this was an affordable neighborhood to live in. But we got big hospitals and companies like John Hopkins that see value in these neighborhoods because the doctors and the people who work for these companies and these these hospitals want an easier commute to work. So they move out the low class people into, uh, I guess, less subsidized housing or worse neighborhoods. But if you look all over the city, they gentrifying everywhere. This just happened to be our neighborhood where we grew up at one point in time. And this is the gentrification that's going on throughout the, throughout the country. You know, um I see this also, you know, first off, this is not a, a, a about our past lives or anything like that, you know, this is more about, you know, the edification, you know, for edification purposes, man, to show people that we really gone through these curses, man, you know, according to Deuteronomy 28, you know, we really going through these curses, man, me and this brother, you know, we grew up around this neighborhood and it's crazy through the spirit. You know, because we really didn't know each other until it was time for me to come into the truth. You know, we know mad mutual friends and everything. You know, we we, we both got stories about how we grew up in this this area. You know, but when it came to, for us to be in this truth, you know, that's when you know we became brothers, man. God, and we both done lost people growing up in the same neighborhood, and it just give more. It, get, it shed more light on the, the, the actual curses that we go through as as right. uh, Israelites and, and Israelites under the curses around this around this neighborhood and all the cities and neighborhoods across the country. I mean, at one point in time, you had houses, a bunch of kids, uh, a bunch of people working, people doing whatever it is they they had to do in life, and they gentrifying these neighborhoods and moving people out. And as you can see, they haven't break in any type of process of building houses up or because I guess they not finished because you still have some houses over here. Right. Another block. <clears throat> and I'm quite sure that they. Yeah, they're going to knock them down, too. They're going to knock them down as well. And, you uh, know. The curses is real. Man. I mean, that's one of the main scriptures that let me know that this was the truth was Deuteronomy 28. You got that, uh, the, the gentrification. Yeah. This is the definition of gentrification. The process of renewal and rebuilding, accompanying the influx of middle class or affluent people into deteriorating areas that often displaces poorer residents. Yeah, they basically moved these people that was living around him into, you know, to probably into another spot where they really can't afford, okay. you know? To, to move in like this, this even when like you, you see this this neighborhood right now man you know this this is the best that it has ever looked man they could have easily had cleaned this this place up man but with this with them renewing this this area you know they they try to uh, clean up the schools and stuff like that clean up the areas you know when when the reason why this this whole neighborhood in, in the first place is messed up is because of them man Bringing in the drugs, you know, depriving us of, of what we really need to get by, man. And growing up, you had counties like Baltimore County, Ramstown, Owens Mills, uh, Cockeysville, uh, Columbia. Those was looked at as like so-called rich people or well-to-do people lived there. And now with the gentrification going on, those areas are being, they're moving people out of the city into those areas. 
So now the county is being brought down as far as um, value. the quality of yeah, living and right. the value just to bring the city's property value back up. So those what, what was considered once well, well-to-do well places to live are full of people from the city now. Right. And Section 8 and less, I mean, well, not less, but more affordable housing. And um, they basically pushing people out of neighborhoods where a lot of history went down, even though it was bad, good or bad, but they pushing them out of there and more a way to bring up the city property value, all to, to uh, all basically to uh, profit these companies and these hospitals, John Hopkins and the Mercies and the uh, University of Maryland Medical. Right. <clears throat> Can you continue on with the uh, definition? That was in on that definition, but I'm gonna go to the I'm gonna go to the uh, yeah the Wikipedia the Wikipedia definition. You know, they, they, we didn't even show at the top of the block, man. Like, where they got uh, new trees and, and, you know, all type of good stuff up there, man. They they really trying to redo this whole neighborhood, man. And as y'all can see, like, they got the, the, the new water pipes that they building, man. You know? That's the, uh, that's the water uh, company. The BG, uh, Baltimore Water, uh, Public Water Company, man. And when I was living around here, you never really remember seeing them coming to flush out the uh, so-called uh, drain systems or redoing the pipes. It just so happened you'll see a, a water company come out like if somebody's sup pump would break or they had to dig it up to fix their sup pump or their draining system. But they they, they going to make this all brand new for the people to come here to get to work that much easier. Right. Anybody who knows, you know, Baltimore, you know, this spot was called Tivoli, man. You know, and, and, and this was this was a real bad neighborhood. You know? So yeah, that's yeah. one of the reasons why they, they, they it's a, it's 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 kind of a good thing they had to clean this up, man. Right. But for the most part, man, they, they could have cleaned this up while the people was here, man. God. They didn't have to move homeowners from out of this neighborhood, man. God. You know? I'm gonna go a little further in this definition. But gentrification is the buying and renovating of houses and stores in deteriorated urban neighborhoods by wealthier individuals, which in effect improves property values but also can displace low-income families and small businesses. This is a common and widespread controversial topic and term in urban planning. It refers to shifts in an urban community lifestyle and an increasing share of wealthier residents and or businesses and increasing property values. Andre Holm doubts the scientific usability as gentrification nowadays stands for a sort of universal metaphor. Uh, this is a German Hartmut. Harbor. Go down a little bit. Oh, God. Let me see. Go down a little bit there. Gen oh, I'm going to go down a little bit. Gentrification is typically the result of increased interest in a certain environment. Right. They, these, these, um... As the brother said earlier, you know, they, they had interest in this area so that the people that work for Johns Hopkins and everybody like that can go uh, faster to work from this place, man. Instead of coming from out the county into the city, you're already in the city, you can go straight to work. Not only that, keep in mind, but not too far from here, you got Johns Hopkins University. So right. they also could be using this for... Uh, dormitory or housing for the students because mm -hmm. I used to drive a shuttle bus that took students from the university down to the hospital back to the university so this could be part of their plans as well early gentrifiers may belong to low income artists or bohem communities which increase the attractiveness and flair of a certain quarter further steps are increased investments in the community by real estate development businesses up though businesses local government or community activists and more economic development increased attraction of businesses and lower crime rates in addition to these potential benefits gentrification can lead to population migration right population migration they moving the people from out this neighborhood into the county you know 
And and also, like I said before, this neighborhood was a real bad area, man. You know, not not well. When there was a, a lot of people around here, you had uh, a lot of um, a lot of drugs. You know, a lot of killings and stuff in this area. You know, but um, more specifically, when when it wasn't that many people around here, it was a lot of vacants around here. You know. And, and they really wasn't cleaning up these houses, man. Like, it was a point in time where it was like, probably like, how many people? Like 15 people living on this block, man. And like, like eight, I mean, 100 houses, man. Right. You know? But now it's nobody around here, as you can see, man. And it's all so that, you know, the so-called white man could come in here and, and, and prosper off of this land, man. They cleaned it up. They try to make it all look good, man. They, they they removed the the so-called bad you know to the to the other neighborhoods and they feel as though like hey we done moved them we'll deal with them another at another time you know I got what you got. <clears throat> See, we just gonna go through with this prayer and bring out a couple of scriptures, you know, on <coughs> this, uh, this whole thing. Uh, this is prop I mean, Psalms 73, and I'm gonna start at the uh, third verse. It says, For I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. You know, all of this right now, man, this is all the prosperity of the wicked, man. You know, one of the curses, curses according to the scriptures, man, because this is all, you know, the, the, the so-called bankers, man. You know, John Sopkins is just a medical, you know, institution, man, but they get all that money, man, through all um, the... the uh, Messing up of our people, man. Giving them all type of craziness, medicine, and all that stuff, man. You know? They messing up our uh, insides, man. Okay. And they, they prospering off of that, man. And they getting us uh, addicted and dependent on their, their medications. Right. You know? So so when you see all this, man, this is just Johns Hopkins uh, completing their agenda, man. You know? Them, them uh, prospering off of getting the cleaning up or so-called cleaning up these neighborhoods, man. When the school systems is messed up, they're closing down all the wrecks, man. It's all messed up, man. Okay. And our people don't know anything, <clears throat> don't know anything, man. They don't have no might in their hand, man. The scriptures say that uh, we going, they'll lend to us, you know, we'll be the head and the tail, man. I mean, they'll be the head and we'll be the tail, man. Okay. And this is just a, a, a showing. A far way to tell, man, because we don't have no, no say so on what, what whatsoever, man. You know, it's a, it's a, a famous saying, uh, saying, man. Uh, they always say y'all niggas are like crabs in a barrel, you know. But they tend to forget that a crab national habitat is not a barrel, man. God. And this basically is just a burrow, man. And it's kind of metaphoric with this with this town, because this town is known for its crabs. Right. And <laughs> and and that's some wicked shit in itself. But and it's like it puts you in a sense of um, everybody fighting to get ahead or get above or get be past the next man. That we all fighting each other like as if we crabs in that burrow or in that pot, and the heat turned up, and we all struggling to get out, and we all just piled up on top of each other. You look at you look at Baltimore, it's a lot of row houses. It, the way it was built is kind of similar to Philly as well. And we just all piled up like crabs in the burrow. That's metaphoric and all in itself. And we all trying to get above and past the next man when we all in the same damn boat. In the same category damn near. Looked at as, as Goyim. Right. Worth his eaters, man. Another uh, point <clears throat> though, because you said something about like the, the they, they gave people the money, you know what I'm saying, to get them up out of there. Mm -hmm. And they was dissing out a, a pretty penny, you know. 
But at the same time, those people that they was getting, giving the money to, they don't got that money no more. Uh, you know? They don't know what to do with that money. Man. They uh, gave them the money, sent them to a night. The, the, the people, you know, they probably got addictions and all that stuff, man. That money right. probably went straight back to John Hopkins, man. Yep. You know? So they knew, John Hopkins knew what they was doing. And that's why the scriptures say, man, for I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked, man. God. You know? We don't have no money in our hand. You know, they, they always say, oh, we turn out our communities, man. But this ain't our community. We don't they, own. That's down this whole thing, man. God. And even even still, we, we don't own nothing in these communities. We don't even own a business. We buy from a Chinese store around, that's around the corner that's owned by a Chinese for years. We had a corner store. We had a black-owned corner store that was up on that end that was ran by a black man, but I'm quite sure he didn't own it. He didn't own the property that it was on, because as you can see, all this shit is gone now. But even still, he <clears throat> like, the products that he was getting was from the so-called white man. Yep. You know, so all the money is just going straight back and back into the white man's pockets, man. Right now, no what you do. they say the black dollar don't stay within this community. It goes into other communities, all the spread around. The people who flourishing off of our our, our, our buying, and, and we not selling, but. They say the Jewish dollar or the Chinese dollar surface around their communities like tenfold. Like their money circulate within their community. They, they flourish and, and, and make money off of the, the, the biggest consumers who out here who is the trial trials of Israel, blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans. So our dollar has no value. Our dollar has no value as far as bringing us up and having an economic impact because our dollar just goes right back to the people who we oppress by. Right. We don't own anything. strength is firm you know that 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 money the, the so-called bankers man they got the power man you know they they not really held back because when our people die man you know we got uh the funeral fees and everything man you know mm -hmm. we not we, we, we our pockets really be hurting man you know it says but their strength is firm man and they showing their strength man you know we're going to move everybody around here, whether you homeowners or whatever the case may be, man. And we're going to send y'all to another spot, man, where you really can't afford it, you know? And it's crazy because my grandmother and grandfather, and there was another family. Uh, you still got it open? Yeah. Go ahead. And it was another family that I knew growing up. They say that our two, it's, it's another family as well. It was three black families was like the first black families to live around here. This neighborhood was once owned by a lot of Jews and a lot of people who were retired teachers or doctors that used to work for John Hopkins because right over in the park, the golf course, you have John Hopkins Mansion. That was one of his mansions that he lived in. And I'm quite sure it was some slave land around here, quarters or whatever, because it's a lot. At one point in time, it was a lake across the street and there was a lot of land. And his mansion is like still standing and is used as a golf house. So I mean, it's a lot of history, and it's a lot of it's a lot of bad history around here as well. More bad than good. Even if uh, a person wanted to stay in there, or, or you, if you owned a uh, a spot, you know, I'll go just, just I'll bring it up. This is uh, the, from the Wikipedia. It says in a community undergoing gentrification, the average income increases. You know, so they bringing in this, these spots and stuff like that, man. They trying to make this spot more uh, feasible for the so-called white man or the Elamites or or whoever you know mm -hmm. works for John Hopkins, man. It says, poorer pre-gentrification residents who are unable to pay increased rents or property taxes may find it necessary to relo relocate. So even if you said that I want to stay here, I don't want to move my spot. You're gonna end up losing it anyway, man. Right. Because the, the with them remodeling the whole entire neighborhood, you know, you could have loved the neighborhood and everything. Could have had peace and everything, man. Had memories or whatever. You know, the the by them renovating the neighborhood, now all of a sudden your property taxes is more, man. God. You know, and it's gonna be hard for you to keep up with it, man. God. It's oppressing, man. That's basically what it is, man. God. Here go another uh, key point. Uh, it says, historians say 
that gentrification took place in ancient Rome. You know? Wow. So this script, this society, man, is nothing but modern day Rome, man. God. You know? All all around it, man. And and it's a a big uh people probably won't even see it as regentrification in a in a form of genocide, a form of murder. But you had a real big gentrification um incident happen down in Katrina because they displaced all them families down there in the fifth, third ward or all the wards that was close to that area near them levees. And you had stories of people saying that them levees didn't break, they heard explosions. They're like they was using TNT down there. And they displaced and moved a lot of them people from out of them out of them them neighborhoods down in, in New Orleans. And a lot of them moved up here to Baltimore. Quite a few of them moved up here to Baltimore and DC and Philly. But that was a real big regentrification effort because now they haven't built that area back up, but they built up the French Quarter. But they found oil down there in the Fifth Ward. So that was a real big regentrification effort that went on that people probably won't even see it as regentrification. I'm going to continue on the scriptures. It says Psalms 73 and 5. It says, they are not in trouble as other men. You know, a so-called white man ain't in trouble as our people. They get the good neighborhoods right. from, the, from the beginning, man. They already get the good neighborhoods, man. Yep. But our people, man, we get the, the worst of the worst, man. In order for you to come up in the society, you got to, you know, conform to the ways of this world, man. God. You know? It says, neither are they plagued like other men, man. They don't go through the same problems that our people go through, man. God. You know? What little we had, we got a total, total different reality than them, man. We don't have what's called white privilege. Right. And the police used to always ride up and down here, man. God. You know? That's one of the plagues too, man. You know? Oh, and another plague, when uh, at one point in time, they had that real big spotlight sitting down here. Right. So you sleep in your house, uh, in your room or whatever, your house, and you got this real big street po police light just shining, brighten up the whole damn block. Right. And it's, and it's loud. And then another thing, Con. they had the uh, cameras, the police cameras up there, man. Con. You know? Up and down this block, man. The police cameras was up, up and down this block, man. Flashing, blue light flashing all night. Right. It says, therefore, pride compasses them about as a chain. Violence covers them as a garment. Their eyes stand out with fatness. They could have more than heart could wish. You know, John Sockers is pretty much the most. Uh, I think it's the, the dominant employee or employer of Baltimore. Okay. You know, they they got a university, a top university. Okay. You know, medical facilities. You know, and they're cleaning up this whole neighborhood, man. And then think about it. Um, a lot of people in this city, they know that if they get shot or anything happens to them in the street, they don't even want to go to John Hopkins. Right. Because think about it, you got nothing but students working on you. Right. <laughs> And then, and then you get a high hospital bill. Highest hospital bill. That you can't even pay. You can't even pay that. Is, they don't they win, no they, problem, they, they win all the way around. <laughs> yeah, they win it, man. They win it. <laughs> it's all oppression, man. All oppression. It says, uh, they are corrupt and speak wickedly concerning the oppression. They speak loftily. They set their mouth against the heavens and their tongue walketh through the, through the earth. Therefore, his people return hither, and waters of a full cup are wrung out to them. Because you, you said that uh, that the, this, the, the Jews and everything, this, this used to be a block where they, where they was at, man. Yep. And they returning here, man. God. You know, this is all for their, for their pleasure, man, for their benefit, you know. It says, uh, and they say, how doth... God, no, and is their knowledge in the Most High? Behold, these are the ungodly who prosper in the world; they increase in riches. Okay. Now, when they bring in these these houses, man, it's gonna be they just gonna bring them through, you know. But when they bring it in, man, that's more money, man, mm -hmm. going into their pockets, you know. Why they prosper? They giving us our people prosperity doctrine. <laughs> so who who's really who's really prospering? I mean. When you really look at it. Right. Our people are stupid, man. The, the, the past is probably was the, the, one of the main ones. Like, yeah, they give them, John's giving out the money. We want them to Yeah, go ahead. You know what? Um, I 
Go ahead and go ahead and get the money from John Hobbs. Get it why why you can, not knowing that you know if you'd have stuck, stayed true to your neighborhood or whatever. Eventually, they didn't move you out if they wanted to, but they probably give you as less as they could, get, offered you as less as they possibly could when you could have um, set your price real high and they could have met that price. But in all actuality, they get they get they got all this land around here. I like guess for for the the least as they possibly could. And you know what though? Like the the, the thing with the, the sin of the police, cause it, it was all a part of a plan, man. Mm -hmm. A wicked device, man, to do ha cause all this to go down, man. I'm pretty sure that they were sending the police down here to mm -hmm. heckle everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, putting up the likes, putting up the uh what is it, the um the, uh, the spot the yeah, light the camera, cameras. The surveillance cameras the surveillance man, camera. in order to get people in that mindset, like man, I don't wanna stay around here, man. Right. You know? I don't want to stay around here, man, because there's so much craziness out here, man. Mm -hmm. You know? So that's one of the wicked devices that they put out there, man. Right. Uh, matter of fact, I'm going to go to this Psalms 10 and 2. It says, this is Psalms 10 and 2. The wicked in his pride doth I mean, persecute the poor. Let them be taken in the devices that they have imagined. You know, they persecuted the poor, man, when they when they took down this spot, man. You know, and basically clinked it all up, man. Cause they could have did this all, you know what I'm saying, in general, man. But they didn't want to, man. There wasn't no money there, first off. You know, and they don't care about our people, man. That's first and foremost. But, um, I'm going to read a little bit more and then we're going to close on, a, close on the video. This is Job 21. And I'm going to start at the 7th verse. It says, Wherefore do the wicked live, become old, yeah, yeah are mighty in power? It says, their seed is established in their sight with them, and their offspring before their eyes. When the people get, and you had many occasions of children dying from the police, you know what I'm saying, or getting hit by a car, mm -hmm. you know, probably getting scared of getting hit by a gunshot around right. here, man. Not only that, a lot of people caught lead around here, lead yeah. poison. Right. And then, um, yeah, that's another, that's a key point too. But then you also got the, um, the fact that the drugs and stuff like that, you know, the children getting caught up in the drug, mm -hmm. you know, not having to, um, they don't have to, the, 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 the wicked don't have to worry about that stuff, man. Uh -huh. But there are people, you know, adapted to their, their, to their environment, man, what's in, what's in front of them, man. Right. They don't know anything. They don't know any better, man. Uh -huh. And that's why the scriptures say that their deeds have passed the wicked, man. Uh -huh. I mean, you see them moving all these other nations amongst Israel. And, you know, at one point in time, I mean, it's going to come to a point where it's going to be uh, a war, a race war. Right. And they're going to be closer and, and more feasible to get to because we all in the same bar part of the same neighborhood. Right. So then we're going to, I mean, it's going to be an uprising within the communities that you regentrify. And it's going to be an uprising in these communities that's so-called already established and well-to-do. So, I mean, they, they ain't doing nothing but... Showing you that prophecy fulfilling is prophecy. fulfilling. Yeah. They fulfilling prophecy all the way around. Right. It says their seed is established in their sight with them and their offspring before their eyes. Because, like, the, the wicked, they get to see their children grow up, okay. be all that they could be. Mm -hmm. You know, meanwhile, our children, you know, if you got them, you got to worry about them getting shot down. Okay. You know, the woman, the daughter go out here getting uh, popped by a wicked nigga out on the street, man. Mm -hmm. You know, your child getting killed, man. Right. You know? It says their their houses are safe from fear, neither is the rod of the most high upon them. Their bull gendereth and faileth not, their cow calveth and casteth not her calf. They send forth their little ones like a flock and their children dance. They take the timbrel and harp and rejoice at the sound of the organ. Because I'm pretty sure when they come around here, you know, it's gonna be a lot of Cookouts, all types of events. Right, all type of. But but go back to go back to that part. What you said. Um, 
They live in fear. They don't have to worry something yeah, about Yeah, their houses are safe from fear. Living growing up around here, even when I was young in the early 80s, late 80s, you was always basically in fear of what could possibly happen. These people out here that's going to be regentrified, moving in these neighborhoods ain't going to have to worry about growing up in fear. You got to go around and worry about if you get caught up in a shootout. You got to worry about if one of your homeboys that went out beefing with somebody mm -hmm. and you get caught in, a, caught in a crossfire for something he got into that you don't even know about. I mean, there's all types of fear we got to live in. Right. And these people safe from it. Right. You know, and this, the, what it says that they take the temple and harp and rejoice at the sound of the organ. You know, that's that's pretty much what they what they about, man. Okay. You know, because like we, they gonna have block parties and all type of stuff, <laughs> man, around here, man. Yep. Wait, Lord, well, if they that's in their plans, man. Oh, and not only that, I'm quite sure they gonna spice that park up too and yeah. put all types of stuff over there as well. Right. You know, they <laughs> love golfing, man, because it's a golf court over there, man. Mm -hmm. A golf course over there, man. A park. Okay. It says they spend their days in wealth and in the moment go down in the grave, man. So you always see these old white people, man, so-called white people, man, who are who are Edomites according to the Bible, man. Mm -hmm. They grow up, they grow old, man, and they don't have no problem, man. Their money is passed on yeah. through the generations. Right. We got to worry about it. We got enough money to so-called bury or, or, or pay for the funeral with them highest overpriced caskets for our people. I don't care about all this. I mean, Lord willing, I, Lord willing, this thing speed up and we we don't taste death on this side. But man, if it comes to it, man, don't don't even man, just bury me, man. I don't need no casket and all that. God, just want to get the hell out of here. God, I'm gonna get one more scripture and then we going going in there on that. Okay. This is Jeremiah twelve. And one and two. It says, Righteous art thou, O Lord, when I plead with thee, yeah, let me take, I mean, let me talk with thee of thy judgments. Wherefore, wherefore doth the wicked, I mean, the way of the wicked prosper? Wherefore are all they happy that deal very treacherously? Thou hast planted them, yeah, they have taken root. They grow, yeah, they bring forth fruit. Thou art near in their mouth and far from their reins. You know, with, with, with them bringing in this thing, they, they, they the, the so-called white man that act like God is in their thoughts, man. You know, and the same way our people do, man. Mm -hmm. yeah, we love God, man. God did this, God do that. The same way the prosperity gospel, man. God is for this and God do that, man. But in their ways, man, they deny them, man. God. You know? In their works, man, they deny the Lord, man. They All this stuff, they don't care about our people, man. God. So they never did well, ever since we came over here, man. It's all lip service. Yeah. That's basically all it is, man. These pastors don't don't care for the people, man. Mm -hmm. You know? Uh, Jesse Jackson, all these, the Sheila Dixon. God. You know? They all, the, what, uh, I don't know, Stephanie Rollins Blake. That's her name. Right. The uh, mayor for the city, man. Mm -hmm. You know? She don't care about these people, man. She came in the office, and first one of the first things she did was shut down firehouses and, and uh, uh, rec centers. Right. You know, these people, they all trying to achieve peace with the so-called white man, the same way that Martin Luther King did, man. Okay. You know? we we, we This is not our, our, our heaven, man. This is not... Uh, this country is not our rest, man. It's not for us, man. Okay. It's going to destroy you, man. If you, if you, if you, uh, if you believe in it, man. Mm -hmm. You know, we got have faith, man, because y'all about to see me outside going to destroy this place, man. You know, with thermal nuclear missiles, man. Okay. You know, they building up all this stuff, man. They're not going to be able to enjoy this, man. You say you build up, you, you shall build up, and I shall throw down. <laughs> right, they should build by us and destroy, man. <laughs> Right, and throw down too, man. The most I'm going to destroy this place, man. God. You know? No, like you said before, earlier, man, these these people uh, bringing it to the, the so-called white people into this neighborhood, but you still got jakes that live around here, man. Yep. You know? When they see that that the martial law, the race riots, and all that stuff go on, man, and they mm -hmm. see these people still not affected by that, man, 
by the the, the fall of the dollar bill, man, they're gonna Count. come after these people, man. And the scripture also say that we're gonna join we're gonna join back in with our brothers. With right. the fighting. So so everybody what to say, everybody gonna go back to their own to their own people, right? Yeah, they're gonna go back to their own people, man. You know? So all they that they're not gonna be able to enjoy this, man. When the spot come down, man, you know, when, when they bring all this stuff in, man, they're not going to be able to enjoy this, man, because the Lord going to destroy this place, man. Time. You know? And it's, it's so much blood on it, man, on this, this land, man. So much. You know? I knew a guy that got killed right there in that spot, right there. I was about 9, 10 years old. Grew up with quite a few homeboys that got killed in this very same neighborhood. Right. So, with that, we want to give all praises, honor, and glory to y'all by some y'all side. Double honors to the apostles of Great Millstone and the sincere salawan to all the Akim out here that's doing the pushing the work of truth and sincerity. Shalom. Death to America. Death Shalom. to America.